Hi guys, it's Dr. Veronica Vax. People with acid reflex often ask me a question. How would I know if I have acid reflex? Do I have high or do I have a low production of hydrochloric acid? And the answer is simple. Symptoms. When people produce, don't produce enough hydrochloric acid, they will have two types of symptoms, gastrointestinal and systemic, bloating, belching, heartburn, indigestion, diarrhea and constipation. Those are symptoms of gastrointestinal symptoms. Also, acne, candida, infection, and in general, low function of immune system. Those are systemic symptoms. Why they happened? Let's go to the blackboard and I will explain you. But before we go there, you have to remember several rules of physiology. If we, if we violate rules of physiology, we become sick. Rule number one, stomach will produce hydrochloric acid, which will dissociate the in the stomach into hydrogen ion and chloride anion. This hydrogen ion will determine pH or acidity in the stomach and it's going to be two. It's very important to have this high acidity in the stomach to digest protein. Rule number two, until pH of two in the stomach achieved and pH of seven in the small intestine achieved, pillarus and uh, low esophageal sphincters will remain closed. Unfortunately, here comes rule number three. After about one hour, 30 minutes, both valves will become tired and they will get open and food, undigested food, can go in both directions, up and down. Now, let's go to the blackboard and talk about the symptoms, how they get formed. I already pre-draw for us picture of the digestive tract. Here is our mouth with the teeth. The food will go in right here. This is esophagus. This is low esophageal sphincter, stomach, pillarus, small intestine, large intestine, rectum, mm -hmm. and we go to the bathroom right here. When we put food in the mouth, mouth, it will drop into the stomach and stomach will start to produce hydrochloric acid to create pH of two to digest the protein. If we don't produce enough hydrochloric acid, this food cannot be broken down completely. As a result, the non-broken protein will start to produce gas and will produce nitrogen, oxygen, hydrogen, carbon dioxide, and methane. The more gas we will produce, the more our stomach will become stretched because it's a muscle. The stretching is nothing but the sense of bloating. Then this gas can escape from the stomach into the mouth and that's what is belching about. People will say that they actually can have a they taste a food that they ate. Not only the food can escape, not only the gas can escape from the stomach, but because the low esophageal sphincter gets stretched, a little bit food and acid will go into the esophagus and will settle down there and will create inflammation and irritation of esophagus, which is GERD. Now, pH of two is not created but hour and a half is gone and the pillars become tight and it's open. Undigested food will go through the pillars into small intestine. The food is here. It should be digested, but it cannot be because the pieces are too big and the small intestine start to produce juices and pH here will be seven. This undigested food will actually create irritation of the digestive tract or the small intestine. Irritation means inflammation. When there is inflammation, there is pain and constipation comes with that. Body will try to get rid of this undigestive and irritating food by pumping water 
from the bloodstream, I will write H2O here, by pumping water into the digestive tract and it will fill the digestive tract of his water and the food get diluted and it will come out of digestive tract as a diarrhea. Now let's go into systemic symptoms. The purpose of digestive tract is to break food into smallest particles here they are and the smallest particles supposed to go from the digestive tract into the bloodstream and let's draw our bloodstream in red. Here those small particles of the food in our bloodstream. They will go with this bloodstream into the cells, cell nucleus and cell membrane is this one. And will rebuild the cell. Some cells have a function. If the cell is immune cell, it will make antibody out of this food that floats in the bloodstream. This antibody will get released into the bloodstream and will go into the area where there is inflammation, viral or bacterial. If the food is not broken and digested and a lot of that is lost, meaning that not enough food here in the bloodstream, meaning that not enough goes into the cell and many functions will start to suffer, meaning that antibody are not formed and the person will have chronic viral or bacterial infection. Besides the good bacteria that lives here in the digestive tract, let's draw them green, they help us to digest food. We have all kinds of bugs that are not so good like candida will live here in the digestive tract because good bugs require a special environment such as pH 2 and then pH 7 but we violated both eventually. They start to die. Fungus will start to reproduce faster. Some of that fungus will thrive in this environment and actually can go through the digestive tract into the bloodstream and this is our chronic candidiasis. That's it for today guys. Thank you very much and please ask me questions here. I am here to answer all your questions. Subscribe. See you again. Bye-bye.